One of the most concerning phenomena that we're seeing today in the modern so-called enlightened world is that of cancel culture, call-out culture. There are so many things today that if you try to stand up against the narrative of the time, you're ostracized, you are censored, you're made to feel from a social point of view that you have no place among people who have a different view. And incredibly, the place that we're seeing this uh, counterintuitively is in Western universities. How many times do people standing up for Israel and wanting to give an alternative narrative that there's not only one narrative to this land and to the story are being shouted down, censored, cancelled out, and cannot even express their views. Boy, oh boy, have we seen this recently with the whole conflict uh, with Gaza and how so many celebrities and social influencers have come out with a very one-sided view of the conflict. And those who try and give a different view are censored and ostracized. And what I find so remarkable is this is being instigated by Hamas, an internationally recognized terror organization, which in, not only implicitly, explicitly is anti-Semitic in its, in its charter, believes that the Jewish people have no right to any collective presence anywhere in the land of Israel. And you and I know, we all know, that if there's one people on God's earth which have the, the oldest and deepest historic connection to a piece of land, a country that they, is the only one that they've ever called their own and never deviated from that connection to Zion and Jerusalem, we all know it is the Jewish people. Yet, this narrative, this other side of the story today is being challenged. That if you even dare stand up and articulate it, you are cancelled out. You're supporting the dark forces. And there is no room, academically or intellectually, for any fair discussion. Incredibly, we see a very similar thing in this week's parasha. A cancel culture also regarding the land of Israel. Incredibly, when the ten spies came back and they gave a particular report of the land and spoke about the fear of the land, the land which devours its inhabitants with all death and terror around, and said that the, the Amalekites are in the land, and there's no way, there's no way that we can inherit this. When Kalev and Yeshua get up and say, indeed we can, and we can inherit it, and if Hashem wants to give us the land, which he does, of course we can inherit it, and of course we can settle it. When they give an alternative narrative, what is the response of Vayumru? What do the people say? You know what our response is? Cancel you out, ostracize you, stone you. You have no right to say and express such a view. And of course, Hashem intercedes. And uh, we know what happens in the end. The great challenge we have today, that we're being challenged in the modern era with our support for Israel and the centrality of Israel in Jewish drama and destiny is the ability to express very clearly the unequivocal right of the, of the Jewish people to this land and to, uh, to have a collective presence in the, the only land that they've ever called their own. And we need to be courageous today in the face of such a cancel culture, which people are more and more being challenged to express their view. May we all have the courage and conviction of Kalev and Yoshua, given the tailwind of our emunah, uh, of this tremendous historic mission, to talk courageously about our divine right and our historic right to the land, and to be able to express with conviction these sentiments of Jewish destiny wherever we find ourselves. Shabbat Shalom.